Hello everyone. Uh, in this video I would like to uh, uh, do one final tutorial uh, on the PolyMesh tool in Artifolution and I'll be covering uh, some of these tools that I haven't uh, covered yet. Uh, for that I made this very funky looking uh, model um, uh, which I will use to demonstrate some uh, techniques that I use often and uh, to demonstrate uh, some of these tools. So, uh, first off, uh, I would like to show you how to make, if you have a structure like this fence or this uh, plateau, uh, how to make like a beam like, like this. I have uh, covered that in another tutorial already, how to uh, join the boundaries between two points. But I'm just going to repeat that real quick. What you do is you uh, create uh, the faces that uh, uh, you want to uh, connect, so to speak, and you delete them, creating an open mesh, and then you select one uh, vertex of every face, and you click Join Boundaries, and voila, that creates our beam. Now, what uh, if we wanted to make this uh, beam like one plank, like there's no hole in here? There are um, multiple ways to do this, and I will show you one of the easiest. What you can do is you can make this into one face by selecting them, deleting them, go to edge mode and then close the boundaries. What this does is it creates one face out of this and of course it will look very ugly because our evolution is now trying to make a face that is bent in space and that's of course not po really possible so it triangulates and it tries to make something out of it so to speak. So what you can now do is uh, select these two points because this is one face you can uh, tell our evolution to connect these by uh, you can connect them uh, by going here or you can connect them by command C and as you can see that creates a little plank this is a technique that I use uh, quite often another way to do it if, um, if we just go back to this uh, this one that we created earlier you can um, select the faces that you want uh, gone so to speak so you want this to be one thing you can delete those and then you can close these boundaries it's also quite easy and then you are left with this edge here and you can delete that of course but uh, you have to um, you have to uh, work around. For for example, if I sh if I show you how to uh, how to de delete this edge, uh, what I would do is uh, select all these faces because you also want to delete these uh, vertices. Or by the way, I can just uh, delete these vertices, and the same will happen because the these vertices connect to all these uh, faces here. So if I delete those, all those faces get deleted and you now want to uh, repair this back by selecting boundaries and making this one whole face again and of course we are not done yet we need to make sure that uh, these points are connected again so there we have our top plank in the corner uh, yeah so yeah um, another thing that I wanted to show you is how to use the knife tool uh, because I previous, previously showed you when uh, dividing edges like this one that you can uh, go here to divide it and then you can uh, like ma manipulate these points but if you are um, on a curved uh, or I should say if you are on, a, uh, on an edge or a face that is not perpendicular to these uh, axes you can't really manipulate them well, like for instance you can't keep them in a straight line like this. So sometimes it is, uh, you can work around that by um, pressing uh, W to select a different coordinating system 
like for instance this is an um, this one uses uh, normals but in this case it doesn't uh, turn out very well so for that I create this little funky looking window and in order to do this um, what you can what you can do if you want to make a window like this is of course uh, what you would normally uh, want to do is like is do it like this but if you want to have this higher then you you're going to have a problem for instance you see that it messes up the whole uh, shape of the model so uh, in, the, in this case um, you should use the knife tool the knife tool does basically the same thing it divides the uh, edges uh, edges up creating new vert uh, vertices and uh, edges in between but this uh, tool allows you to um, have control over where the vertices are placed so uh, you want to select these two edges in fact it doesn't you doesn't really don't really have to select them and you can just drag a line and as you can see new vert uh, vertices are placed along that line intersecting these selected edges if you don't select um, and the edge you want to cut then it will cut through all the edges except for the one on, on the back so if you wanted to make this little window you can go ahead and uh, make some cuts there we go As you can oh, sorry about that and you can connect these and you can add this as much detail as you want of course this um, um, knife tool is a lot less precise for instance if you wanted to cut an edge right in the middle then uh, you shouldn't use this you should just uh, use the divide uh, edge all right um, so next thing that I wanted to show you, I, I'm trying to keep this uh, video as short as possible, but <laughs> obviously that's not uh, easy. Um, let's see, the next thing I wanted to show you is a technique that I al also uh, use a lot, and that's the, the tool, the stitch stitching tool. And I'm going to show you a scenario, so, so to speak, where this might come in handy. For instance, if you wanted to extrude this little face so that it looks like this or something then for most purposes this is fine but if you wanted to like weld it onto this face down here because if you move it upward it's at, uh, not attached to the bottom face and if you wanted to do this then um, what you need to do is make an outline on this uh, bottom face here and then we can stitch the those two uh, things together so I'm going to, going to do that real quick of course this is a very simple shape just a rectangle that you want to uh, uh, create on the floor or, or on this face I should say uh, let's see Alright, I want this, these to align uh, perfectly, so I'm just going to fetch the Z coordinate and copy it in. I should connect them first. I'm going to scale them out a little bit so you can see what happens here. Ah, sorry about that as well, I should have closed these. Alright. Uh, the Z coordinate. As you can see, I can copy this coordinate so they align up precisely. And I also like, I always uh, like like to keep my models clean like like, like this. But if you don't really care about how uh, how precise the model is, then you shouldn't 
really worry that much, you can just uh, eyeball it. Alright, now for the extrusion. Just make it roughly so that it lines up. And again, if you want it uh, to be precise, you can get these coordinates. Uh, let me see the, the x coordinate. And apply it to all those vertices. Like this. Now let's select this, ed this edge. Alright, what you want to do to weld it to this face is move it upward so you can see what you're doing. And it, this doesn't matter because it will get stitched down later. What you do is you select these two faces that you want uh, me uh, melted together, so to speak. And you can delete them. So you have an, a hole that you should uh, repair. You, you should always repair holes like this. But when you, uh, when you want to weld, weld this together, you can use the stitch tool. And the way this works is you um, drag from, from the edge that you want to uh, weld down on this face. So, uh, for instance, um, I want this edge to go to be attached to this uh, this edge then I, I want to drag it uh, down but if I want to do it the other way around I should do it like this but of course uh, as you can see that doesn't look good alright and this one doesn't need uh, stitching because it uh, was already clear that it had to be attached alright so now this little structure is attached to the face like this. And another, another technique that uh, looks uh, quite like this, uh, that I use a lot, is uh, the, it's called collapsing. And I'm going to show you the difference between these uh, techniques in a minute as well. For instance, here on the top of this little strange thing we have a face and say that we wanted this to be very pointy you could just uh, scale it down like that, that it's almost not visible anymore that there's a face but that's not really uh, the way to go if you just want it to be pointy we should just get rid of this face and the way to do that is to select it and go to collapse and as you can see the face is gone and all of the points merged into one point and you can also do that with edges <coughs> so if you were to select these two edges and go to collapse and as you can see the edges collapsed and the two uh, vertical uh, edges merge together. Now the, uh, the way this is similar to the stitch tool is that if I delete this I can also merge them but um, with the stitch tool you can uh, assign kind of like a, assign a direction to it like if I do it like this they get merged uh, the, the edge right here gets merged to the, the other edge so if you are collapsing them, you merge them to the middle point. So that's uh, one thing you should you could bear in mind. So if you wanted to merge these these two, but you don't want them to be in the middle, you should go for the stitch tool. All right. Um, well, there's one more thing I wanted to show you right now, and that's the tentacle tool which is a tool that I normally don't really use it that much but uh, I thought I'd uh, show you this anyway because maybe uh, some of you out there do like to use it uh, the way this works is you select a uh, face that, that uh, acts uh, as a base for this tool and what you do is uh, you just add some points as you can see it creates uh, kind of like a tentacle and you can uh, adjust 
identical with these if I wanted to make this bigger or if I wanted to move this just like that and don't forget to go back to the move tool again if you when you're, you're finished um, yeah this will of course look better if you, uh, if you have smoothness on as you can see the whole mesh looks funky now and I what uh, let, let's say that I just wanted to make this tentacle smooth and uh, not the rest what I, what I could do is select all the edges and you see here smoothness is set to 1 you can set it to 0 and let's just select these edges and put them on smooth and that way only this part is smooth however you sh uh, when you're exporting this there's one thing you should know for instance if you're exporting to uh, to an OBJ, you kind of like want to uh, use this subdivide smooth meshes, and this parameter um, gives you control over how detailed the smoothness becomes. Because if you just um, export it without this, there won't be any information about the smoothness here, it won't be unsmooth. However, if you uh, wanted to uh, export this for some kind of game model or something where uh, the amount of polygons um, you want to have in your mesh is limited, I, su I suggest you go for uh, smooth mesh here. And if you then turn off the smoothness, you can see that this is smoothed out a little. As you can see, it has more segments and more rings here. And the rest of the mesh where you turned off smoothness uh, stays this way. And then you can, of course, export this without uh, the extra smoothness. Alright, so this uh, about wraps up my uh, tutorials about the poly mesh. Of course there are some tools here that I haven't covered and that's because I don't really use them and I have no idea what they do basically. I, c I uh, do just fine with these tools that I have already uh, explained like the bevel tools of course one of the most important. This one I guess I, I've mentioned already one of these I don't know uh, which it was. These two I don't know, I, d I don't use them, I, d I have no idea what they do. Um, this one is uh, probably um, a tool that's interesting, uh, but this is for another topic. This uh, is used for animation. And I'm not very skilled at animation, but uh, I think I will do a tutorial about that in the future, just to show you how it's done. So. Um, I suggest you uh, just m uh, m mess around with the polymesh tool and explore all these options that you see here. And um, well, if you have any questions about the polymesh editor, uh, feel free to ask. And uh, well, take care.